Hello, I am Dr. Philip Meese. I am pleased to talk to you about our study titled Comparison of Men and Women with Axial Spondyloarthritis in the U.S.-based Corona Psoriatic Arthritis Spondyloarthritis Registry. Axial Spondyloarthritis, or AXSPA, is a chronic inflammatory disease that primarily affects the spine and sacroiliac joints. Peripheral joints and entheses can also be affected. AXPA includes both patients with radiographic AXPA, also known as ankylosing spondylitis, or AS, and those with non-radiographic AXPA, who do not have visible radiographic evidence of damage in the sacroiliac joints. The leading symptom of AXPA is chronic inflammatory back pain. Other symptoms include peripheral arthritis, enthesitis, and extraarticular manifestations such as uveitis, psoriasis, and inflammatory bowel disease. Failure to diagnose AXPA in its early stages can result in delayed treatment and worse patient outcomes. Historically, AXPA has been considered a disease that predominantly affects men partly due to the perception of AS as the prototypical form of the disease, and classification criteria focused on axial symptoms and the presence of discernible radiographic structural damage. Women are less likely to have definitive sacroiliitis and visible structural damage than men, which may contribute to the under-recognition of AXPA in women. Women are also more likely to have peripheral symptoms and extraarticular manifestations than men, which can lead to misdiagnosis. A thorough understanding of these differences may lead to improved identification of patients with AXPA and earlier, more appropriate treatment. The objective of this study was to characterize and compare men and women with AXPA in a real-world population of patients seen in routine U.S. clinical practice. This study included adult patients with AXPA who were enrolled in the Corona Psoriatic Arthritis Spondyloarthritis Registry, a large, independent, prospective, observational cohort of patients diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis or spondyloarthritis by a rheumatologist. Data on patient demographics, clinical characteristics, disease activity, patient reported symptoms, work productivity, and treatment history were collected at enrollment and compared between men and women. Of 498 eligible patients, approximately 62% were men and 38% were women. The majority of patients had a diagnosis of AS and the proportions of patients with AS or non-radiographic AXPA were similar between men and women. Depression and fibromyalgia were more common among women than men, and women had more prior conventional synthetic disease-modifying drugs and prednisone use. Although women had comparable or better spinal mobility than men, Women had more peripheral symptoms, including higher tender and swollen joint counts and a higher prevalence of enthesitis. Women also had higher overall disease activity and greater functional impairment than men, indicated by statistically significant, clinically meaningful differences in BASDI and BASFI scores. Women also had worse health-related quality of life than men, including more severe inflammatory back pain, overall pain, and fatigue, as well as greater work and activity impairment. There are some limitations that should be considered when interpreting the findings of our study. Patients in the corona registry are routinely seen and treated by rheumatologists who voluntarily participate in the registry. The cohort may not be representative of all U.S. patients with AXPA, as many patients are not being treated by a rheumatologist. 
Diagnosis of fibromyalgia was based on physician judgment, the prevalence of which may be underrepresented in this data set. The Corona Registry is currently incorporating the widespread pain index and symptom severity scale, validated quantitative measures of central sensitization to better assess fibromyalgia in future analyses. The small sample size of patients with non-radiographic XFA may have limited the detection of statistically significant differences between men and women with non-radiographic XFA. No longitudinal analyses were conducted to assess differences between men and women over time. In summary, we found that in this U.S. registry of patients with AXPA, women had a greater overall disease burden compared with men, including higher disease activity, worse patient-reported symptoms, and greater work productivity impairment. Women demonstrated less impairment of spinal mobility, but increased signs of peripheral arthritis, suggesting that conventional definitions of AXPA centered around axial symptoms may need to be broadened to include peripheral manifestations in women. Improved awareness of sex differences in the presentation of AXPA may aid physicians in earlier identification and improved disease management.